In this video, we'll be going over two ways to do a limiting reactant and theoretical yield problems. Uh, one's a shortcut, and one is the full process. Let's take a look at this problem. Consider the following reaction. When 3.22 grams of aluminum reacts to 4.96 grams of HBr, how many grams of H2 are formed? And part B is asking us, what is the limiting reactant? I just rewrote the reactants right here, and now I'm going to transfer the numbers underneath the reactants and, and products. We have 3.22 grams of the aluminum reacting for, with 4.96 grams of the HBr. And then the question is asking us how many grams of H2 will be produced. So this is going to be a limiting reactant problem because we are given a finite amount of both reactants. So that means one of these reactants will have to run out first. And the reactant that runs out first will be called the, the limiting reactant. The limiting reactant is important because it will determine how much product is produced because once one of the reactants run out, the reaction is going to have to stop. It can't proceed anymore. So essentially that reactant will determine how much product is produced. The shortcut for doing these type of problems is to first, if you're given the grams, the first thing to do is convert the grams into the moles. And the way we convert the grams into the moles is we divide the grams by the molar mass of the compound. The way we get the molar mass of the compound is just to look up the mass on the periodic table for aluminum. The period, for example, aluminum's molar mass is 26.98. So we'll take the grams and divide it by 26.98. And then the molar mass of HBr will just be the mass of H plus the mass of Br, which is about 80.91. So we'll take that divided by the molar mass, 80.91. And this will give us the, the moles of each of the, react, of each of the reactants. Then I get these two, 0.119 moles of aluminum and 0 0.0619 or 613 moles of HBr. So if we take the grams divided by molar mass, that'll give us the moles of each of the elements. Then I can divide the moles by the coefficient or the numbers in front of the reactants in a balanced chemical reaction. And that's just so we can sort of put these, these two reactants on a level playing field. So we'll divide this by two and we'll divide this by six. And let's take a look at those numbers. And we get 0 0.0597 for the aluminum and 0 0.0102 for the HBr. Then we look at, we compare these two numbers to see which, which one is smaller. And the smaller number is gonna be the limiting reactant. So 0 0.01 is smaller than 0 0.05. So that means that the HBr is gonna be limiting. That means that we have less HBr, so the HBr will run out first. So we can just write, HBr is the limiting reactant here. So that will answer part B, what's the limiting reactant. But how do we figure out how many grams of H2 are formed? Well, we know since HBr is the limiting reactant, it will determine the grams of hydrogen that would be produced. So we can we can do some stoichiometry here. And I'm going to just write down a flow chart. And this, this is the flow chart of how, how we do most typical stoichiometry problems we go typically we go from grams to moles to moles to grams so we have we are we have the grams of uh, hbr so we can convert that to moles of hbr and then to moles of h2 and then grams of h2 but we actually already have the the moles of hbr right here so we can start here and then go to grams of h2 0.016 moles of hbr then to convert from moles of one thing to moles of the other thing, we can use the mole to mole ratio. Whatever is on top here has to go on the bottom. So we have to put moles of HBr on the bottom. And since we're trying to convert to moles of H2, that goes on top. So whatever you start with goes on the bottom of the, of the fraction. And then whatever you're trying to get to, that unit will go on the top of the fraction. And for mole to mole conversions, we just look at the balanced chemical reactions coefficient. So there's going to be three moles of H2 for every six moles of HBr. And then when we do that, the moles of HBr will cancel out. So now we have converted to moles of H2. Then now we have to convert moles of H2 to grams of H2. So we'll multiply by another conversion factor. Whatever's on top has to automatically go on the bottom so we can cancel out. And we're, whatever we're trying to get to, grams of H2, that will go on the top. Then when you're dealing with grams and moles, so during this conversion, when you're converting between grams and moles or moles and grams, you're just going to use the molar mass. And the molar mass of H2O, it's approximately 2.02 .02 grams for every one mole. 
and the molar mass will always be how many grams there are in one mole. You will not be using the coefficients in the balanced reaction. You only look at these coefficients when you're doing a mole-to-mole -mole conversion. And we know we're doing this right because most of H2 will cancel out. So to get our final answer, it'll be the 0 0.0613 times 3 divided by 6 times 2.02. .02. So that gives us point, point 0.6. Uh, 0 0.0619 grams of H2 as the final answer. That's going to be the, um, this actually right, right here. So point, point 0 0.0619 grams of H2 is the theoretical yield. That's how much, that's how much reactants, or sorry, that's how much product can be produced if this reaction that was 100% perfect. Or another way of saying that that's the maximum amount of the product that can be produced. So that's technique number one. That's considered to be the shortcut. Now, some teachers don't like that. So what if we have to show our work? How does this look like? Well, the process is going to be really, really, really similar. So let me move this out of the way. It's going to be really similar. To, the difference is that we are just going to be doing the conversion process twice. So we're going to convert the grams of HBr to grams of H2. And then we're also going to convert the grams of aluminum, the other reactant, into grams of H2. So we're just doing a, a conver two conversions. We've already done this one, so that's going to be the green. That's going to be the HBr being converted to H2. Now we're going to do convert aluminum to H2. We'll start with the grams of aluminum, 3.22 grams of aluminum. So for this conversion, it's going to look like grams of aluminum to moles of aluminum to moles of H2 and then grams of H2. Well, whatever's on top has to go on the bottom. So that we'll put grams of aluminum on the bottom. And we're trying to get to moles of aluminum. So that will be on top. And that would just be using the, whenever we're dealing with grams of moles as a smaller mass. So we'll have one mole of aluminum for every 26.98 grams because that's the molar mass of aluminum. Then we are going to convert the moles of aluminum to moles of H2. So moles of aluminum will go on the bottom. And since we're trying to get to moles of H2, that will go on top. For the mole-to-mole -mole ratio part, we just have to look at the balanced chemical reaction. There's three H2s for every two aluminums. Lastly, we are converting from moles of H2 to grams of H2. So that's just going to be the same conversion right here that we'll just use the molar mass of H2. 2.02 .02 grams of H2 for every mole of H2. And we can check that everything cancels out. Grams of aluminum cancels out. Moles of aluminum cancel out, and moles of H2 cancels out. And then that gives us 0.362 grams of H2. Then to determine which one's the limiting reactant, we just have to see which reactant gave us the lesser amount of product. And 0 0.06 is less than 0 0.36. So that means that HBr produced the lesser amount of product. That means HBr was consumed, completely consumed first. And so there's less HBr, and then HBr is the limiting reactant. So both of these techniques will give us the same answer. And then for the theoretical yield, you always choose the smaller number. So we'll choose this as their theoretical yield, which matches up 0.619 grams of H2. So H if HBr is the excess reactant, that must, I mean, limiting reactant, then that means the other reactant, aluminum, is the excess reactant. It just means that you have that, that you're going to have some aluminum left over after the HBr is completely used up. And then that's how you would figure out the limiting reactant and figure out the theoretical yield of those two processes. Either use the shortcut that we learned initially, or you can just do the stoichiometry process twice and see which reactant gave you the lesser amount. Now let's add a, one more part to this question. So the last part that we're going to do is what is the percent yield if 0 0.0477 grams of H2 was produced in the experiment? It's a percent yield problem. So they do percent yield. To figure out the percent yield, we're going to take the actual yield or the amount of product that was actually produced in the experiment, which in this case is 0 0.0477 grams. And then we're going to divide it by the amount that we are supposed to get if everything was perfect, which is the theoretical yield, 0 0.0619, and then multiply that by 100, giving us 77.1%. That means we got 77.1% of what we were supposed to get if the experiment went 100% according to plan. 
And that's the summary of limiting reactants, excess reactant, actual yield, theoretical yield, and percent yield.